Hello everyone, my name is Pixorus, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we are back at the museum, which I have been doing a little bit more work on. I've expanded the doorway here at least, because I realized that we are probably going to need a grander entrance than just the few blocks I was providing for it, so I expanded it two segments out that way. Basically seven blocks in this direction, moved this entire segment of wall over, or at least <laughs> moved one section of it and then just kind of copied it over to the other side and reoriented that window slightly. Does mean the beacon is off center now, but that's fine because we're going to need to move the beacon anyway. I have been flattening out some more of the terrain in this area and I'm pretty much at the limit of what a beacon's radius can allow me to flatten out. Basically, anywhere you see that there is not grass, like natural tall grass has been growing, that is somewhere that I've flattened out either by completely you know, carving away the terrain and adding grass in afterwards, or adding grass in just to fill in the divots in the landscape. So, we're not doing too badly so far. It's a long process, though, and so today's episode is going to focus on something a little bit different, but sort of related to the museum, because one of the things I wanted to do with this museum is make sure we have one of every block and item in the game, and that includes a whole variety of stuff that I had not necessarily considered earlier on that we might want to keep. There is of course going to be a section related to tools and combat and that kind of stuff and that includes stuff like bows and arrows and we need a lot of tipped arrows basically to demonstrate all of the different varieties of tipped arrows. We also need a few examples of lingering potions and Looking back at my supplies, I really don't have a great deal of dragon's breath. When I was originally going through and killing the dragon over and over again to open up those end gateways, I didn't really think about harvesting dragon's breath, and then when I decided, hey, I'm not going to respawn the dragon anymore, I've got all I want out of that fight, I did not take dragon's breath into consideration. But it's actually going to be kind of fun to have some for the museum, because in the example I mentioned in the previous Survival Guide episode, on the museum in Decidedly Vanilla Season 3, the Ender Dragon skeleton I had hanging from the ceiling actually had an interactive element to it. And I think an interactive element is going to be kind of exciting to have in this museum. If you go to a museum in real life, it's not just objects in glass cases, because that wouldn't make for a particularly engaging experience for visitors to the museum. Instead, there are interactive exhibits, there are things that you can touch, and like audio clips you can play, and interesting stuff, buttons for you to push to make visiting the museum a more tactile experience. And so I decided to have a setup where I pushed a button on the floor, it fired an arrow up towards the dragon that was hanging from the ceiling, and that activated a dispenser which would fire a lingering potion from the dragon's mouth, making it look like it was breathing dragon's breath. And I really liked that idea, and it's something I'm interested in doing again, which means we're going to have to collect a bit more dragon's breath, which means summoning the dragon again. Now, I have already summoned the dragon since we took down all of the obsidian pillars. I did it on a live stream for charity a while ago, and I've also done it since then for the 303 questions video. So... The damage has been done, the obsidian pillars are back, and it didn't actually do any damage to the outer ring that I built around the end gateway, so I feel pretty comfortable respawning the dragon at this point. The first thing I will need is a lot of glass bottles. Lately I use all my sand to convert it into TNT so I can go blast mining for ancient debris, so instead I'm just going to buy some glass from these librarians who will trade me a decent amount of it twice per day, which means I should have more than enough to get myself some glass bottles. And if your first instinct was to write one of those am I a joke to you comments about the witch farm, the answer is yes, the witch farm is kind of a joke to be honest. I really haven't AFK'd here for quite some time and while I'm fairly certain the design still works in 1.16, it is slow. It's something I would have to wait around for a good few hours before I got any reasonable output of glass bottles, whereas trading glass with my villagers gets me glass instantly. And while I have been looking for a location where I can build a witch farm that includes more than one witch hut, I haven't really found one that is close enough to spawn to be worthwhile, so I think in the end we're probably going to stick to trading glass from the villagers. But that's fine because I've already been able to get quite a few stacks of the stuff, and with a few more trades we should be good to go here. So I think I've got enough glass bottles now, and I also have enough end crystals. We will only need four for this, so I'll grab four out of there. I made a lot of these a while ago when I was planning on doing some blast mining with them. 
Let's make sure that's back in the ender chest before we continue. I'm planning on filling up an entire shulker box more or less with the dragon's breath. We can fit a few more glass bottles in there if we want to, but I think that'll be good for starters. We can always resummon the dragon if we really need more, but I think having a few rows of it in there is going to be good for the future. Good preparation for the future if we want to do anything else with the end in the meantime. So the process for this is actually going to be fairly straightforward, and I thought it'd be a good chance for us to take a look at the dragon's behavior. And excuse me, why is there a zombie holding a door in here? Some of them, I guess, must have come through when I was last visiting the stronghold. But yeah, that is that is very bizarre. Okay, no worries. Like I was saying, I figured this was probably a good chance for us to examine the dragon's behavior a little bit and find out what exactly makes it tick. Because of course, the dragon fight can be quite intimidating to people who've only done it a couple of times. It's always a little bit nerve wracking at taking on the dragon the first time around. Round. But later on, once you're a little bit more confident and once you've taken a look at a few of the dragons, attack patterns, it can be fairly easy to predict. And so we're going to try and use that knowledge to determine how we can get the most dragon's breath in the shortest amount of time possible. It turns out I actually used quite a bit of redstone for spawn proofing the portal for that Shulker transport episode back in the day. No worries. Going to put all of that stuff away. We're going to get our glass bottles out and then we're going to summon the dragon and see how this all goes. Before we do that though, we're going to prepare the area around the end portal so that we can more effectively harvest the dragon's breath without taking any damage. And there's a very simple simple way of doing this. All we'll need to do is dig some holes around the outside here, probably five blocks long and two blocks deep, and these are just holes that we're going to stand in while the dragon is breathing. In the center of each of these holes, I am going to dig a little bit further down into here, and we'll probably encounter the old uh, wither summoning station that I built down here. Yeah, there it is with the obsidian, not to worry. Well, that's the center of the portal, more or less, so we can just head out in this direction and dig another trench on the next side around. And once that's done, we just have this little trench dug on four sides of the portal, basically in all of the cardinal directions. And I've got a system of tunnels down here. I say a system of tunnels, it's a crossroads, basically. And that's just going to allow us a little bit of space to stand underneath the portal if we need to recoup a little bit, maybe if we need to swap out a few more glass bottles from the shulker box, that kind of thing. But this is pretty much all set up now, so the only thing we really need to do is summon the dragon. End crystals on each of the four sides, and the dragon should start Resummoning, and I'm going to turn my hostile mob sounds down for this one because the dragon is always a little bit loud. Now, of course, as usual, a key aspect of this process is going to be not looking at the Enderman and also having some firework rockets on my hotbar so that I can make sure I can get into the air if the dragon is about to attack me or if I'm about to be thrown into the air by the dragon's advances. Now, let's see if it comes back okay. Yes, there we go, the dragon is here. And with the dragon resummoned, the first task, as always, is to start flying around and taking out those end crystals. Now, we do have the option of getting out some glass bottles already because the dragon will sometimes shoot fireballs at you when you take the crystals out or if it manages to target you. But the behavior we are looking for for maximizing the dragon's breath output is what it's doing right now. It swings around, comes down on top of the portal, and it should start breathing dragon's breath. And this is the anomaly right now. This is the thing that I'm a little bit concerned by, is not seeing it breathing dragon's breath when we're on top of the portal. We kind of need to make sure that happens for us to collect the most dragon's breath. And that was what I thought was linked to the dragon's health, but I can't really find any information to support that on the Minecraft wiki or anything. So it seems to me like it may just be something a little bit more random than that. There we go, it fired a fireball at me. Unfortunately, that one is trailing off into the distance and it's not gonna make impact on anything. So we can basically ignore that. So according to the Minecraft wiki, the dragon has four major attack patterns. Whoa, there we go, <laughs> which are circling, which is what it's currently doing right now. It circles around the towers and sometimes around the exterior of the towers, recharging its health from the end crystals. It will look for players and will occasionally target them with a fireball if it finds one within range. This tends to happen a little bit more if you are within range of the central bedrock portal, the exit portal, because this is effectively supposed to be the dragon's nest. And so naturally, like any animal, it wants to protect the nest. That seems fairly straightforward, right? The next thing we are looking for is this perching behavior where it will come down on top of the nest. And if a player is within a certain range of the portal, there we go, it starts breathing that breath onto the ground. And that is the stuff that we can jump in and get ourselves some of with the glass bottles. And now <laughs> there is actually a range in which the breath will appear. And that's something we can take full advantage of once we're ready to harvest it. But the dragon will do this more and more 
as more end crystals start to be destroyed, and obviously you don't want it regenerating too much health if you want to end the fight quickly, so we're going to try and take out the rest of the end crystals to encourage it to stoop and perch on the portal a little bit more. The next state the dragon should have, according to the Minecraft wiki, is strafing, and we kind of saw an example of it there. You can briefly see that when one of the end crystals is destroyed, the dragon kind of flies sideways a little bit and instantly shoots a fireball at the player if the player is within 64 blocks of the end portal. So that's actually kind of a specific one, but you should see it start to happen if you are firing arrows from within this area upwards at the pillars. And of course, it's a little bit harder to demonstrate with these caged crystals because I'm in the habit of shooting them from above now. There we go. So if we come down here, yep, as you saw, the dragon shot a fireball at me. So that is actually a fairly predictable behavior once you know about it. Now, however, once the uh, end crystals are all destroyed, the dragon can no longer regenerate health. It should start to swoop down and come down onto this portal a little bit more. There we go. We got a little bit of the dragon's breath on us, but then we can grab as much of it as we can. We already have six of it in a bottle. And basically, anytime the dragon fireballs you like that, you should be able to gather about six bottles of dragon's breath, maybe up to eight. There we go. I think, yeah, I got another six that time, and now the dragon's breath is completely gone. But now we get to try out the next phase of the fight, which is when the dragon comes down and stoops above the portal. And as long as my calculations here are correct, we should be totally fine standing in this little cutout here. Yep, even though it looks like the dragon just totally breathed on me, I'm going to take the shield out of my hotbar so I can just spam click this, we can collect as much dragon's breath as we want because it's breathing it on this area above us, but the dragon's breath is actually held up on top of the blocks around us. And so we're able to gather a huge amount of dragon's breath in a very short amount of time, and the dragon is not able to deal any damage to us, the player. So you might be wondering, how on earth were we able to do that? There was a huge area of dragon's breath there, and we didn't take any damage from it falling in on us whatsoever. Well, it turns out that the dragon can only generate dragon's breath on a kind of flat plane here. And I'll take a moment here to observe the dragon breathing this time as it may contain a little bit of information vital to this. When it breathes out, the cloud of dragon's breath actually settles basically five blocks away from the portal here. The center of the dragon's breath cloud is about there on that first block of black concrete. And when it turns on a diagonal, you'll see that it's actually pretty far out from the edge of the portal here, meaning that if we count out four blocks from the outside, that is the safe radius in which we can stand and the dragon will be able to breathe on us without really dealing us any damage. All I need to do is hop down into one of these trenches. The dragon should turn towards me because it does try and turn towards the player to attack. But then once it starts breathing, it's just going to linger on this block here and we should be able to collect as much of it as we want. Even those particles falling on us aren't going to deal us any damage, which means we can just look upwards, spam right click or hold down the right click button if you don't have anything in your offhand and collect as much dragon's breath as you need. So I'm going to grab the rest of the bottles out of my inventory here. I'm going to make sure the shulker box is on me just in case that gets swept up by the dragon. But the dragon is supposed to have a fourth behavior in this fight, which to be honest, I really don't see all that often, and it is the diving state. The dragon is typically supposed to dive down and attack the player if it detects the player within range of the portal. You've probably seen this if you've played the fight in earlier versions or even in Minecraft Bedrock Edition, where the dragon will fly down towards you and attempt to knock you into the air or off the island. And it does that when it leaves the portal, but it does not do that the rest of the time. And I feel like this is actually an oversight in the dragon's AI right now. It has never, as far as I recall in the last few versions, stooped down to attack me while I've been running around the island. But now we're standing in this two block high trench over here, the dragon is going to breathe directly on my head, and we should just be able to collect up more of that without even worrying about taking any damage. I have tried this in a creative mode test world, and you can stand here without armor to do this. So it's actually it's actually kind of laughably easy to collect Dragon's Breath at this stage. Now, as always, I'll include the caveat that I'm doing this on the most recent version of Minecraft Java Edition, and I do not know if this works in any other version. So if you're trying this in Minecraft Bedrock Edition, it might turn out that this measurement that I've made here and the dragon's area of effect with the breath attack is potentially a little bit different. So 
I really recommend trying this out in your own time, maybe in a creative test world, and making sure that you've got the measurements right, because that area of effect with the dragon's toxic breath can be very, very deadly if you're in the middle of it. You might also want to bring a carved pumpkin to wear on your head if you're concerned about looking at any Enderman, because the Enderman will run around after the dragon, and it's entirely possible for you to aggro them as a player, but I think we're getting about 32 bottles of dragon's breath per time, if not more. <laughs> Anytime the dragon breathes on me, I'm going through about half a stack of bottles and then some, just trying to clear up the cloud of breath that the dragon spews from it. So we're actually in prime breath gathering position here. Now with a couple of small additions, you can almost imagine this being an AFK farm as well. All you need to do would be to fill up your inventory with some other kind of item, set up some hoppers underneath here to receive the bottles of dragon's breath as you threw them out of your inventory because you wouldn't have any space for them, and have a dispenser refilling the glass bottles in your hands so that you never really ran out of them. And eventually, you wouldn't even have to open up your inventory. You would just be bottling Dragon's Breath constantly, feeding it back into a system of chests. And as long as you had enough glass bottles, you'd be able to harvest Dragon's Breath to your heart's content. The one problem with that being that the dragon is occasionally prone to fireballing you from a distance, and that does require cleaning up manually because sometimes it can land down here in this area. But if you dug a one block wide trench, maybe the dragon wouldn't be that accurate. It'd be interesting to determine whether or not that was the case. But within, you know, 15 to 30 seconds, the dragon usually swoops back down and perches on top of the portal. Usually it will swoop down in a direction facing the player, which means it's open to attacking you basically right away. But if it doesn't do that, you can just adjust your position head over to the side where it is and it should stay there once the player is standing there so you can collect all the dragon's breath you want. I'm being a little bit careful putting down the shulker box because I am still a little bit concerned that the dragon might end up swooping through here once or twice and destroying my shulker box but even then we should be able to get ourselves a decent amount of dragon's breath with the glass bottles I've got left. So I'm going to continue bottling up the dragon's supply for the next little while, finish off this fight and head back to the overworld. There we go! The dragon is taken out and I ended up <laughs> taking a lot of damage just from standing on top of one of those towers. The dragon really came at me there for a second, but it's all done! The dragon fight is over and I've got myself more or less a full shulker box, or, you know, a decent amount of a shulker box filled, two-thirds filled up with dragon's breath, and that should be more than enough for what I have planned for the museum. So, now I have to figure out something else to do for the rest of this episode. Alright, I've decided what I'm going to do for the rest of this episode. I'm going to build up a mock-up of the dragon head so that I can show you guys exactly how this works, so you don't have to go back to the old Decidedly Vanilla episode and find it. And for that, I've brewed up myself three lingering potions of regeneration because I think those are the closest particle color to the dragon's breath itself. There's nothing that really gets that luminous toxic purple that the dragon fires out of its mouth but I'm pretty certain lingering potions of regeneration will have to do. Now I'm gonna set up a little bit of scaffolding so we can raise this off the ground so you guys can see exactly what I'm gonna be working with here and we're going to build out a little platform of scaffolding here because this thing is going to be fairly large. I'm gonna use smooth quartz for the construction because I want it to look like a dragon skeleton. And while we could use bone blocks for that, you can't really do a whole lot with bone blocks. They tend to look a little bit odd because they're a directional texture and they've got that kind of circular end texture to them. So yeah, I'm not gonna be using bone blocks even though we are effectively trying to make a dragon skeleton. So what I wanna do is set up a little mouth section here like so. We're just gonna have that be four blocks deep and about here we're gonna have a dispenser. So I'm gonna grab one of those out of my redstone box real fast and that's what's going to be dispensing the lingering potions. We'll put that in there. I'll probably put a couple of smooth quartz slabs over the top of it as well because that will actually conceal the dispenser while still allowing it to be activated and still firing the potion effect over a pretty wide area. From there, we're gonna build this up so that we have a roof of the mouth like so. And it looks a little bit goofy as though the dragon has this kind of skeletal tongue under there, but that actually works pretty well. Now around the other side, we're gonna start on the head structure, and this is actually going to be a little bit taller and a little bit wider than the mouth section because that's how the Ender Dragon's head is constructed if you look at it in-game. So this is the basic shape of the Ender Dragon's head, and for a little bit more draconic detail, we're gonna pop in here, add in 
a couple of the nostril flares there. It's not exactly accurate to the Ender Dragon, but it's not terrible. We're going to add a bit of a ridge to the nose part here, and we're also going to hollow out some sections here for the eyes. We'll probably fill in these back sections here. We'll cut this bit out as well, like so, and then we're going to have some slabs that slope down towards the center to give the dragon an angry expression. Let's step back and take a look at that. Yeah, there we go. I like that. The overall effect is certainly there, and maybe we could color in the eyes purple if we wanted to really give the effect of the Ender Dragon's eyes that kind of glow with that Enderman style purple. But what we can now do is place a button on the underside of a block underneath here. So if we wanted to have like a ridge underneath the mouth as well, then we totally could. <laughs> it makes it look a little bit like the wattle of a chicken, but there you go. And if I end up placing a button there and activating that now, you can see, there we go, the dragon's breath spews out from the mouth, that lingering potion of regeneration providing some particle effects. And it's not exactly going to breathe down onto the player down here. We could set up another dispenser facing outward if you wanted that to be the case, potentially, but I kind of like that idea. And the idea I had when I built this in my my museum originally on the decidedly vanilla server was just having a button on the underside of this which once the head is hoisted up to the kind of level where it would be displayed as part of the museum you could simply fire an arrow at it from a dispenser below and this could be a target block now actually which could work but could also look a little bit odd in the surroundings of all of this uh, quartz block whereas if you wanted to conceal the button with another block then you could just have it on top of the button but all I need is another dispenser down here fill that with arrows and have that fire upwards into that button there although I have a feeling that it can't be a stone button if you want to have an arrow activated I think it may have to be a wooden button so let me grab some of the wood out of here yes this is all wood that I've got from the local area taking down all of those trees let's put a wooden button underneath here it could be some of the newer varieties of wood could be birch wood if you feel like that blends in a little bit better but all we have to do is fire the arrow up from below and there you go it sticks into the button activating the dispenser for the duration that arrow will stay there which is about a minute and the lingering potion sticks around for I think about 15 seconds or so, I think is the duration that a lingering effect will stay there, and it will slowly diminish over time, but then sooner or later it disappears again. The arrow would despawn and you'd be able to activate it again. I'm still working on the layout of the museum itself. I'm still kind of thinking that through, so I probably won't keep this dragon skeleton here permanently, and I probably want to raise it up a little bit higher when we actually build the final thing, but it's gonna have the kind of ender dragon brow ridges there. It's gonna have the kind of horns on the top there and I think that looks I think that looks pretty good I'd say that's fairly accurate to what the ender dragon's head looks like and then we would just have to build the skeleton the kind of spine and the wings out of the back of it I think that could look pretty special as the centerpiece of the museum and people have suggested putting the netherite beacon there when I finally have enough resources for that people have suggested bringing the dragon egg into this and having the dragon almost curled around it as though it's protecting the dragon egg because there's only one dragon egg in this world and I do still have it somewhere in my uh, chest. I think it might even be over in the storage unit at Founders Forge, but still, I think it could be a pretty special centerpiece for the foyer of the museum if we have this giant dragon head in the, uh, the central atrium of it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. It'd be great to hear from some of you guys about this, but I think it's going pretty well so far, and I hope you enjoyed this look at getting some Dragon's Breath nice and safely. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.